Hello again. Today we talk about equivalent fractions. With whole numbers or natural numbers or integers, there's really only one way to say 5 or 12 or negative 68. But with fractions, one of the really cool things is that there are a lot of different ways to express the same amount. Okay, so let's first see what we can do about getting a good visual understanding of what equivalent fractions really mean. And there are a couple of ways we can do this. Let's start off with some money. You already know that 20 nickels has the same value as one dollar. So if you think of the dollar as the whole amount, then one nickel is one twentieth of a dollar, right? It takes 20 to make a whole and you have one of them. Of course, if you have five nickels, then we have five twentieths of a dollar. But five nickels is exactly the same as 25 cents, which we know as a quarter of a dollar. So with fractions, we can say that five twentieths is equal to one quarter. We say that 5 twentieths and 1 quarter then are equivalent fractions. They have the same value, but different appearances. You can also see this when you look at a ruler. Here we have one half on the first ruler, perfectly lining up with two fourths on the second ruler. One half and two fourths are two different ways to express the same amount. Let's check out the next page. Oop, a little too far. Okay. So here we have three figures, each of which has one third of the figure shaded. We can change the fraction that represents this amount by changing how we divide up the figure, but not by changing what portion of it is shaded. So here in this first picture, we have one third of the figure shaded. But if we came down here and cut this figure in half, with the horizontal line. Same portion is shaded, but we would represent it as two pieces out of six. If we came to the third figure and cut each of those halves in half, so that now we have 12 pieces, the same portion of the figure is shaded, but we would represent it as four twelfths. Now the last thing that we want to do is to draw pictures as we're creating equivalent fractions. So it's probably worthwhile to see how we created these fractions without the pictures. If we started off with one third, what happened is that drawing that horizontal line gave us twice as many pieces. Twice as many pieces to make the whole and twice as many pieces that were shaded. That's how we ended up with two sixths. And you see that we can multiply straight across numerators times numerators and denominators times denominators. The same thing happened over here in the third figure. We started off with a third, but then we created four times as many pieces. Four times as many pieces to make the whole, four times as many pieces ended up being shaded. And that's how we got four twelfths. All right, let's slide up a little bit. Our job here is to create a fraction that is equivalent to 9 twelfths. And there are lots and lots of ways to do this, actually infinitely many ways. So let's just pick one. Let's try multiplying 9 twelfths by, I don't know, how about 7 over 7? We know that 7 over 7 is equal to 1. And of course, multiplying by 1 will change the appearance of the fraction, but not its value. Right? When you multiply something by 1, you just get the thing back. 
So we get the same amount back, but a different appearance. So here's how it works. We start off with 9 twelfths, multiplying by 7 over 7. Oh, and let's see, 12 times 7, that's 84. So now the whole is divided up into 84 pieces instead of 12. The shaded pieces, of course, got smaller, but we also got more of them. Instead of 9 out of 12 pieces being shaded, we now have 63 out of 84 pieces being shaded. So 63 84 is equivalent to 9 12 Let's check out the next example. Last time we just chose 7 over 7 because, well, I like 7s. Now we want to be a little more specific about what we're doing. Our job is to create an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 120. So the question is, how do I get from 12 to 120 by multiplying? And of course you know that 12 times 10 is equal to 120. So if we start off with 9 twelfths and multiply the denominator by 10 so that we have 10 times as many pieces, that's also going to give us 10 times as many pieces that are shaded. And in the end, we have 90 pieces shaded out of the 120. So our answer is that 9 twelfths is equivalent to 90 120ths. All right, let's move on to the next page. Whoops, a little too far there. This time we'd like to create a fraction equivalent to 7 and 3 47ths. We would like a numerator of 24. Now, the shaded portion of the picture is not going to change. When you look at this, you need to see seven holes completely shaded and then a portion of the next picture shaded. So the whole number is not going to be affected when we rewrite this as an equivalent fraction. Changing the numerator or denominator does not affect the whole number. You know that 3 times 8 is 24. And of course, this time we're looking at the numerator because that's what the problem asked us to do. If we're going to have eight times as many pieces shaded, we need to have eight times as many pieces in the hole. Stop the recording, see if you can figure out the answer, and then come back when you're done. All right, here we go. Let's just focus on the fraction. 3 47 multiplying the numerator by 8, multiplying the denominator by 8. 47 times 8, well, let's see, uh, 40 times 8 is 320, 7 times 8 is 56, that should give us 376 pieces. And of course, 3 times 8 is 24. So in the end, we still have 7 holes, but instead of saying 3 out of 47 pieces are shaded, we now have 24 out of 376 pieces shaded. Okay. We can also create equivalent fractions by making the number of pieces smaller instead of larger. So let's take a look at how we might do this. I didn't have any way to have you folks erase lines that were already on the paper, because of course this is in print. So we'll just have to imagine that that's what's going to happen. We start off with our picture over here that has 9 out of 12 pieces shaded. And we'd like to create another picture, exactly the same portion is shaded, just with fewer lines. So what I want to do is get rid of all the vertical lines. We'll pretend like all the up and down lines are missing. So we'll need one uh, down here, in the middle, and one up here. We have exactly the same picture, we just don't have any of the up and down lines. And now when you look at the picture, three-fourths of this 
is shaded. Well, how did we get from 9 to 3? Instead of multiplying like we did before, technically speaking, sort of, what's happening is that we are dividing. We divided 9 by 3. We divided 12 by 3. What we really do in practice is look at the numerator and the denominator and see if they have any common factors. So what happens is we start off with 9 over 12 and we break 9 down into some factors. I know that 9 is 3 times 3. I know that 12 is 3 times 4. We already know that 3 over 3 is equivalent to 1, so that common factor divides out and we're left with 3 fourths. Just to complete our vocabulary, let's fill in a definition for a common factor. A common factor is a number that divides into both numbers without a remainder. A fraction that is written in lowest terms shows a numerator and a denominator that have no common factors. So all that work we did a few lessons ago trying to figure out um, what the prime factorization of a number was, what a number might be divisible by, will come in handy here. Let's flip the page and see. Our job is to write 45 one in lowest terms. And we're going to do this two different ways, so it's probably not a bad idea just to uh, separate the page here a little bit. 45 one It is not important to know the largest number that goes into both of these without a remainder. It's just important to find a number. And then we'll look at the answer. As I look at the numerator and the denominator, I see that one, ends, one of them ends in a 5, the other one ends in a 0. So 5 is certainly going to be a common factor. As a matter of fact, 5 times 9 is 45. And 5 times something else will give us 120. 120 divided by 5 is 24. Five over five is one, and we are left with nine twenty-fourths. Is nine twenty-fourths in lowest terms? Um, well, no, it's not. Nine and twenty-four also have a common factor. Nine doesn't divide into twenty-four, but nine is made up of three times three, and we know three goes into twenty-four eight times. So we'll factor nine, and we'll factor twenty-four. 3 over 3 is equivalent to 1, and that leaves us with 3 eighths. Is 3 eighths in lowest terms? Well, 8 isn't prime, it's certainly 2 times 2 times 2, but there aren't any factors of 2 in the numerator, so we're done. So we're not looking for prime numbers left over, we're just looking for numbers that have no factors in common. Could we have done this differently? Yep, we could have, that's why I split the page. You might have seen that 3 went into the numerator and the denominator first. Or maybe you have uh, 45 and 120 as numbers that you are familiar with, and you know that 15 divides into both of them. Remember, we had that divisibility rule that said if 2 and 3 were factors of a number, that 6 was also a factor of a number. Well, here I can see that 5 goes into both of these. And 1 plus 2 plus 0 is 3, so 3 goes into 120. 4 plus 5 is 15, which is divisible by 3, so 3 goes into 45. If 3 and 5 both go into a number, 
then 15 is a factor of the number. So if we had seen this, we could have said 45 120ths is the same as 3 times 15 and compared to 8 times 15 in the denominator and just canceled or divided out that common factor of 15 right away. We would have gotten to the answer a little bit faster. The point is, it doesn't matter which common factor you see. It matters that we divide out the common factor, look at what's left, and see if we have any other common factors remaining. The answer will always be the same. When we get done, 45 125 ths is exactly the same as 3 eighths. Let's check out another example here. Oh my, this looks rather intimidating. We would like to write negative 1,575 2,940ths in lowest terms. And of course, the first question is, what do we do with the negative sign? And since we have equivalent fractions, if the first fraction is negative, its equivalent form will also be negative. So what we're going to do is just keep track of this. might even want to put it in right away. We know the answer is going to be negative. And after that, let's just look at the fraction the way we're used to seeing it. What common factors do you see? Well, I think we have the same situation we had before. Five is certainly a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. 1,575 divided by 5 is 315. Two thousand nine hundred forty divided by five is five hundred eighty eight. Whoa, let me fix that. Hang on. There, that's a little better. And of course, the common factors of five divide out. And we are left with three hundred fifteen, five hundred eighty eighths. Um, let's see, does 3 go into the numerator? It does. 3 plus 1 plus 5 is 9. 3 goes into 9. Does 3 go into the denominator? 5 plus 8 is 13, plus another 8 is 21. 3 goes into the denominator. So there are more common factors here. Pause the recording, see how far you can get, and then come back. Okay, so before you tried this on your own, we discovered, or decided I should say, that the numerator and the denominator had a common factor of 3. 315 is 3 times 105. 588 is 3 times 196. And of course, the common factor of 3 divides out. And now we're left with 105 over 196. Do I have any more common factors? Well, I don't have any that I'm seeing right away. I know divisibility tests for 2, for 3, for 5, for 6, for 10. And none of these are working. But that doesn't mean there aren't more common factors. It just means that none of the easy numbers are common factors. Let's check some more prime numbers. Um, let's see, we checked 3, we checked 2, we checked 5, let's try 7. 105 divided by 7. Oh, that works. What about 196? Because of course these factors have to be common. 7 has to work for both numbers. Oh, and it does. Okay, so let's do that. 105 is 7 times 15. 196 is 7 
times 28. And the common factor of 7 cancels. And so now we have 15 28ths. Oh, the numbers are so much smaller now. 3 times 5 is 15. Are there any 3's in 28? No. Any 5's in 28? No. And so we are done. Our answer now is negative, don't forget about that part, negative 15 28ths. All right. Hopefully that went well for you. Let's flip the page. Here we have, I don't know, you tell me, is 126 54ths a proper fraction or an improper fraction? The numerator is greater than the denominator, so this is an improper fraction. My pen is not cooperating today. There we go. an improper fraction. And we know that every improper fraction can be rewritten as either a whole number or a mixed number. So when you see directions like this, it doesn't mean that you have to do both. It just means don't be surprised if you get a whole number or don't be surprised if you get a mixed number. One of them is going to happen. There are two ways that we can tackle this. One thing that we can do is to write the original fraction as a mixed number and then put the fractional part in lowest terms. So let's write that down. We're going to write the improper fraction, or sorry, yeah, write the improper fraction as a mixed number. And then write the fractional part in lowest terms. Okay, so we have 126 54ths. And we want to write that as a mixed number. So let's start by just dividing. 126 divided by 54. Our whole number portion is 2. Two times 54 is 108. 126 minus 108 is 18. And you probably already knew that anyway. So we have 2 and 18 54ths. Now we want to just pay attention to the fractional part and rewrite 18 54ths in lowest terms. Can you think of a number that divides into 18 and 54 evenly? Well, certainly 2 divides into both of them. Uh, 3 divides into both of them. Anybody thinking about 9? I like 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 6 times 9 is 54. 2 times 9 and 6 times 9. Just like before, that common factor divides out, and we are left with 2 sixths. Do I have any more common factors? Oh yeah, 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Again, divide out those common factors to make 1, and we are left with one third. So in the end, we know that 126 54ths is exactly the same 
as 2 and 1 third. Let's keep track of that. Our second option is to go the other way. We can write the fraction in lowest terms first. and then convert to a mixed number. So just like we did before, let's look at 126 54ths. Clearly we can see that 2 goes into both of these and 3 goes into both of these. So let's use that common factor of 6. All right, you pause the recording, take it from here. 6 times what is 126? 6 times what is 54? See if you have any more common factors that can divide out, and then rewrite your answer as a mixed number. When you get done, come back and compare with what we have here. So I found that 6 times 21 is 126, and of course 6 times 9 is 54. We'll divide out those common factors, and now we're looking at 21 ninths. Of course 21 is 3 times 7, and 9 is 3 times 3. Divide out another set of common factors, and we're left with 7 thirds. Both of those numbers are prime, so they don't have any common factors. We're done with the writing and lowest terms part. Of course, 7 thirds is still improper, so when we convert this to a mixed number, we're just dividing. 7 divided by 3. 3 goes into 7 twice. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 left over. 7 thirds is worth two and one-third. How'd you do? I bet you did just fine. This wasn't so bad. So in the end, we end up with exactly the same answer either way. It doesn't matter if you start by writing lowest terms or start by making the mixed number. We just have to go through both steps. 126 fifty-fourths is exactly the same as two and one-third. Can your calculator do this? Of course it can. Fractions are so common, though, that we really ought to learn how they work by hand so that at least when we have some small ones, we can calculate efficiently and quickly, and we can anticipate the result on our calculator for when we have larger ones. So here's how this would work on your calculator. We would start off with the fraction key. Here we have numerator divided by denominator. Remember, some calculators don't have this, so having strong, solid fraction skills is really important. All right, numerator over denominator. 126 is the numerator. Use your down arrow key and then fill in the denominator with 54. Use the right arrow key to come out of the fraction. Our job is to convert this to a mixed number. And you remember that the mixed number conversion portion is here written on the calculator. So it's um, diagonal and up from the, to the right from the numerator denominator key. So we need second and the button right below the writing on the calculator. When you press enter, there we go, two and one third. So you have the ability to check all of your answers before you turn in your homework. And hopefully you also have the ability to anticipate the size of the answer before you work on your calculator. All right, good luck with your homework. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.